Okay, let me thank by, uh, let me start by thanking the organizers for inviting me uh, to give this talk and let me join the others uh, in wishing ICTS uh, a great future. Um, so I'm going to give a talk on thermalization in two-dimensional field theory, some results on them. This is a fast subject. So I'm going to stick close to uh, the subjects that I know and I have uh, worked on. So it's a ba this is based on uh, some works done over the uh, past couple of years. So with my students, Ritam Sinha and Nilakar Sarukhebam, who are here, and uh, with Takeshi Morita, who was a postdoc in TIFR and is now a faculty in Shizuoka University, uh, Pavel Kaputa, uh, who is a postdoc at uh, Niels Bohr Institute, and Shruti Paranjpe, who is an undergraduate in Aysar Pune, and Tomonori Ugajin, who is a postdoc in uh, Santa Barbara. Okay, so let me start. Um, so, so there are various ways of, uh, you know, sort of uh, discussing dynamics. Um, and, uh, you know, dynamics can have a new uh, class of uh, universality, uh, you know, universal phenomena as against statics uh, for which we know, uh, you know, how to go about it. And uh, some, uh, you know, glimpses of this were uh, already mentioned in Mukun's talk. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a specific way of, uh, you know, doing uh, dynamics, which is quantum quench. Uh, so w what is that? So suppose uh, that we have a system which is initially in its ground state and is perturbed by time-dependent coupling like that okay, in which O of X is some operator of the theory and um, I, I introduce some time de dependent coupling. Uh, so I switch it on, this uh, time dependence for some time and then um, find out how the system uh, evolves um, afterwards. So this is an important subject in uh, various experimental realizations of cold atom systems and so on, certainly in hydrodynamics and in the short time behavior uh, of, uh, you know, um, uh, transitions in uh, uh, magnetic systems uh, uh, or even in uh, cosmology where, uh, you know, you pass through some critical point uh, while doing this uh, critical value of this coupling G uh, and where you have necess some necessary violation of adiabaticity so that you, you start with the ground state and you are certainly not in the ground state. Okay, so for example, if you start with the ferromagnetic, uh, in the ferromagnetic phase and you go to the paramagnetic phase, but some amount of magnetization will be kept and what, uh, how much these properties depend on, uh, you know, the quench protocol and uh, wh what are the universal features of these, these are some of the important questions that, uh, there are many uh, nice reviews uh, of this uh, area, so the one that I uh, find most useful for me uh, is, is, is this one, sorry, excuse me, Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, here it is. So, um, uh, the, this, uh, this one, but by no means this is the only one. Okay, so, um, so let me continue. So, after the time dependence uh, ceases, say at t equal to zero, the post quench dynamics is now described by the final Hamiltonian, okay, in which this uh, gets uh, some constant value and uh, because of the reasons that I, uh, that I um, uh, said, uh, the, the state that you are left with now is some excited state, okay, which serves as an initial state at t equal to 0 with the final Hamiltonian, okay, so that is the uh, system. So some of the questions that w w we ask is do observables of the system approach an equilibrium, okay, so you take some operator. Uh, we'll take these operators to be local operators mostly and uh, we'll look at its uh, dynamics, the expectation value of the operator in this state. Uh, of course, it's time dependent because this uh, state sign out is an excited state and uh, is it true, for example, that after some characteristic time, uh, T equilibrium, this uh, uh, which could even depend on the choice of the operator O. Uh, does it uh, go to some asymptotic value and whether the asymptotic value is described by some <coughs> equilibrium ensemble, okay. So that is, uh, okay, the, the next question is uh, if so, then does the, so for so far existence and nature of the equilibrium configuration depend on the system uh, chosen, the observable chosen 
and the quench protocol. Okay, how much of these uh, things are um, uh, uh, so? Uh, in particular, it would always be some sort of search for universality uh, of these questions. So, th so there is a um, sort of uh, uh, hypothesis uh, in this uh, field, which is called the quantum ergodic hypothesis, which says um, that uh, you know under certain uh, circumstances, uh, such equilibrium ensembles would exist and it would know about the energy of this state. So that is to say, uh, of course, it's a conservative system. Once the time dependence has ceased, it's given by a um, uh, conservative Hamiltonian H. And you can compute the uh, expectation value of the Hamiltonian in this state. And you can construct a microcanonical ensemble uh, using that value of the energy. And the, uh, the hypothesis simply is that the rho equilibrium is the microcanonical ensemble uh, based on that value of the energy. Okay, so this is what I said. So equilibrium configuration exists and depends only on the energy of the initial state. So it only remembers the energy of the initial state. So these are some of the things which we will, um, uh, you know, have a uh, second look at. And uh, and of course, uh, you know, once it is given by static properties, of course. Uh, you know, it, 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 it satisfies the usual, uh, you know, critical uh, universality of the Wilsonian kind. Uh, so that also we will. So, uh, okay. So, so uh, first of all, on this side, we know that you know there's the usual you know, universality of uh, uh, physics of uh, field theory in the time independent. <laughs> Uh, but uh, then again, as I said before, is there some kind of universality in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, dynamics of this? In uh, so uh, uh, so, what are the? Okay, so uh, for example, in the short time behavior, uh, is there some universality, the, or long time behavior? Uh, and uh, uh, you know, it might depend on whether the quench is. Non-critical, that is to say, the final Hamiltonian uh, is has a mass gap, or it is critical, and uh, whether there are um, you know specific functional dependence of uh, these objects. I mean, the um, the way it approaches its uh, equilibrium value is it like a power law? Is it like exponential, and so on? So uh, I would like you to take these uh, questions from the slide, the red ones. So. Uh, so, for example, is there some kind of a, um, uh, what is the dependence of the uh, existence and nature of the equilibrium on, on these objects? And we would look at the long time behavior of obs various observables and we would see whether there is an exponential approach to equilibrium and we would uh, particularly explore the thermalization exponents. So, these, these are uh, these exponents gamma that I will call thermalization exponents. There's a lot of interesting story about short time behavior also. Um, you know, just, just like when the time dependence has just ceased or, uh, you know, it's, it's about to end. Uh, and there's a lot of interesting stuff uh, uh, that's happening here. And uh, Shumit Das, uh, uh, Rob Myers, and uh, various other people in this audience are involved in the short time uh, universality of the system. Okay. So th those are the general questions. So now let me let me um, uh, sort of uh, particularize. So what I will do now is to uh, focus on 2D uh, dynamics, and I would say um, I would uh, you know concentrate on critical quench. That is to say that the post quench dynamics <coughs> is given by a conformal uh, field theory, and uh, the the time dependent perturbation I would uh, represent as such, okay, in which the operator uh, is, has a certain dimension uh, delta counted in this conformal uh, field theory and g of t is the time dependence. So let me further uh, make an assumption that the quench is sudden, is given by step function and from the value g naught it just goes to 0. So in this case the quench protocol has only one scale, okay, so that is g naught. So you can read off the uh, you know conformal dim uh, the, the di dimension of G naught from here, and you can construct a length scale. So there is only one length scale in the theory, and you can argue that at um, uh, momenta which are low enough compared to the mass scale given by this quench, okay, it would be described by um, uh, you know some some conformal uh, state, some st uh, which describes the state at t equal to zero is some boundary state which respects conformal invariance 
up to a cutoff uh, which is provided by this uh, length scale. Okay. So, this was, the, uh, this was the assumption of Cardi and Calabrese, uh, which I would, so this state I would call the CC or the Cardi, Calabrese Cardi state, uh, which said that uh, you know a single scale quench can be modeled uh, in this way. Okay. So, um, okay, and what, what are the, so they, they found a beautiful set of results. Uh, in uh, irrespective of what uh, you know the uh, uh, in a, a very general set of uh, results. Uh, so, for example, one point functions thermalize exponentially fast. So, there is a um, uh, you know there, there is an equilibrium behavior given by a certain uh, equilibrium ensemble and uh, indeed it approaches exponentially fast. I will tell you what these objects are. So, uh, um, this beta, the inverse temperature of the equilibrium ensemble is just related to this cutoff parameter as beta is equal to 4 times kappa and the thermalization exponent is related to this uh, uh, cutoff parameter or beta like so and the conformal dimension of this operator. Okay? So, that was one result about one point functions of local operators. Um, Okay, so now these. Uh, um, so there is a certain. So from the point of view of condensed matter, uh, things, uh, there is a certain dependence uh, of this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, these results on the quench protocol in the sense that remember that beta is given by the um, height of the, the, the uh, coupling that you start from, and um, however. Uh, what uh, Calabrese and Cardi noticed is that if you take these ratios, okay, gamma i over gamma j, uh, then they are universal. Okay, they depend only on the properties of the conformal field theory, and it does not depend on on beta. However, you may say, of course, that you know beta represents uh, the energy. If you compute the energy of this uh, of this uh, uh, state, then it's it's given by uh, you know some one over beta square. So after all. Uh, you know, appearance of beta in this final formula is also not so bad, okay? Because uh, it's, uh, it re reflects remembering the energy of the of the system. And from the point of view of black hole physics, I mean, this this would be related to the mass of the black hole. So that's uh, uh, also fine. Okay. So now, uh, so that was about uh, one point function of uh, one single operator. But you can also, uh, you know, ask uh, what what if you have a string of operators? Okay, uh, can you make a statement about a string of operators? And uh, so the so there was a conjecture by Cardi uh, uh, last year in which uh, he said that uh, well he he uh, you know he conjectured some property of the reduced density matrix which uh, um, uh, you know implies the following is that if you have a number of a, a string of local operators all contained within a finite interval, okay, uh, then uh, there exists a sort of um, characteristic time uh, beyond which uh, you know the, the even this uh, arbitrary string of operators contained within, a, an, within an interval uh, equilibrates to um, a thermal average uh, like that. And the approach is given exponentially uh, fast, uh, but now there are uh, you know a whole string of operators, arbitrary string of operators. You can't say that it's given by the conformal dimension of any one of them, but it's given by a conformal dimension which characterizes the whole theory, which is the conformal dimension of the most relevant operator of this uh, theory. We will um, uh, so show later how to uh, prove this, and in a, in a more general uh, setting using the late time behavior of the reduced density matrix of this uh, interval. Okay. So, um, however, before explaining how to get their results, uh, um, we uh, uh, first uh, discuss some limitations of the calabrese cardi uh, state, uh, which are the following. So, for example, you know, the, the, the sudden quench of course is a possibility. But you can have other scales okay, uh, featuring in the quench protocol. For example, it could have uh, you know, this height and it could also ha have a thickness. Okay. So, for example, it can have some uh, you know, the uh, quench protocol could be given. By the way, this time dependence is called a quench protocol. So, g of t could be g naught and then some function 
we, uh, of uh, t over delta t. Okay, so then we have two scales at least uh, here uh, coming like that. And uh, the other thing is that there could be multiple conserved charges in the system. So energy may not be the only conserved thing. There could be other conserved um, uh, charges. And uh, in that case, of course, you would expect that the, uh, you know, the quantum ergodic hypothesis, which says that uh, you know, we should use um, a microcanonical ensemble, which uh, has the energy as a, um, as a uh, model for the equilibrium ensemble, is inadequate because it doesn't take into account the other charges. Okay? So we propose that in a CFT with additional charges, uh, we will call uh, this generically WN, we can solve both these issues by generalizing the calabrese cardi state as follows. Okay? And we will uh, justify this. Uh, so uh, what is this? So here we have uh, multiple cutoffs corresponding to the various conserved charges including the Hamiltonian. Okay? And uh, so there's a technical requirement that we will need is that these WNs are conserved, char uh, are, uh, conserved charges which are obtained from local currents, which are primary or quasi-primary operators. I don't think I can go into the uh, proof uh, if anybody asks me, uh, I, I mean, uh, the justification of the, these statements. But I'll try to give some indications of how we prove these things. Um, so the multiple cutoff parameters here can take into account both at the appearance of multiple charges and the multiple scales that uh, uh, characterize the coins protocol. Okay. So in this, we in fact include integrable conformal field theories with infinite number of conserved charges and uh, these uh, will also show thermalization. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, so let me just, uh, uh, before going on, let me, let, let me say how this uh, state uh, this kind of a state arises uh, okay, in, a, in a particular example, which is a free scalar quench. So I have a free scalar field theory in which there is a mass term uh, m square of t. And uh, in that case, um, you know, one can explicitly find out um, the relation between the uh, you know, initial ground state and the final ground state. Um, it's, uh, it's given by a Bogolibov transformation. So this is uh, something that is worked out. Uh, in, in the case of a tan hyperbolic uh, profile of the kind which I uh, said in the previous slide. So there is a, uh, there is a thickness uh, of the tan hyperbolic and there is a height. Okay, so uh, in, 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 this, in this case, one can explicitly find out what the, uh, you can just read off the expression for the Bogolyubov of coefficients from Birel Davis and uh, then you can expand in, in small k over m0 and m0 times delta t. Uh, so and and you get some you know you get some double uh, expansion uh, like that, and uh, you can uh, you know so by using now a variant of the Baker-Campbell Hausdorff formula, you can write this this object okay as a, a, a sort of uh, you know exponential of some co uh, coefficient function multiplying the Hamiltonian and some other coefficient function multiplying the W4 charge, etc., etc., acting on a Dirichlet boundary state. Okay? So this is just a sort of a simple exercise in Baker-Campbell-Hausdorff. And uh, so this becomes a, uh, so this is a generalized uh, calabrese cardi state with the boundary state identified as a Dirichlet state and the cutoffs for all even W infinity charges as you expect out of a C equal to one real uh, scalar. Okay, so this is an example in which one can explicitly show the appearance of the generalized calabrese cardi state. Okay, so the plan for the rest of the talk. Um, so we will uh, show that the, you know, the, even this uh, uh, for the generalized quench, the one point function uh, thermalizes and um, the, the old universality relations that uh, calabrese and cardi had, which is that the ratio of the thermalization exponents are, um, are yeah, universal that will not hold anymore, but there are new universal ratios that you can construct, which uh, will see only the um, uh, conformal field theory, um, uh, uh, basic properties of the conformal field theory. Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll have some um, you know remarks about uh, thermalization in integrable uh, models. A little bit of history, one slide worth, 
and uh, what uh, you know uh, how this connects with uh, what we are going to say. Um, so uh, and then uh, you know about uh, the string of operators. Okay, we are going to uh, you know. Uh, uh, get our result of uh, thermalization by uh, you know exploring the late time dynamics of reduced density matrices and uh, so which which will tell us about the thermalization of arbitrary string of local observables and will uh, make a um, brief mention of uh, its relation to the uh, entanglement and entropy um, so we will relate the thermal thermalization exponent in the quent situation to decay of uh, uh, decay rate of perturbations. Five minutes? Ooh. Oh, five minutes. <laughs> ah. Okay. Um, all right. So, and then I uh, uh, will talk about the holographic uh, interpretation of this. And um, okay. So let me let me uh, go on. Uh, so the way the Calabrese Cardi uh, uh, results are proved are basically by using conformal maps. Uh, so, if you have a quint state, uh, uh, one point function corresponds to an operator insertion on a strip, which you can uh, transform into an um, upper half plane, and then one point function by a method of images, it becomes uh, uh, this thing on the um, uh, two point function on the plane. So, the disconnected part, uh, you know, involves one point function on the plane, which can be made into a one point function on a cylinder. A cylinder corresponds to a thermal a thermal physics, so therefore it corresponds to um, yeah, so the so the disconnected parts will give you the equilibrium values and the connected pieces. Okay, uh, it's it's like a two-point function on the plane, but in uh, continued to Lorentzian time. Okay, uh, when you do that, then the um, you know the angular rotation actually becomes Rindler evolution. So that is why uh, you know these points uh, get uh, exponentially separated by an exponential boost, and that gives you the uh, thermalization uh, exponent, which is what I said before. Okay, and this geometry itself says that you know it 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 would be related to uh, two point functions in a thermal state. Okay, um, right. Uh, so for the generalized uh, Cardi Calabrese state, uh, we. Um, Okay, so so th th these are the results that we prove that uh, there is a thermalized. Uh, um, so there is an equilibrium value given by an equi uh, 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 you know given by um, a generalized equilibrium um, ensemble, which is the uh, uh, which has not only the temperature but all uh, chemical potentials, and this includes integrable theories in which uh, you know this this uh, such a uh, general. Uh, grand canonical ensemble is called the generalized Gibbs ensemble. Uh, so, um, let me just say that this over the last uh, you know, eight years or so, uh, you know, thermalization in integral models uh, okay, has been uh, found in several condensed matter systems, but these were mainly in several examples of massive uh, integral theories. So, some examples are given here transverse field rising model, hardcore bosonic chain, uh, um, massive scalar field theory, and matrix quantum mechanics. So here's some result that I have given about uh, you know eigenvalue distribution of matrices, which uh, thermalized not on the Gibbs average but on the generalized Gibbs average. Okay, and we we show in the present work that this thermalization to GGE is generic to integral conformal field theories. Okay, whereas for the massive theories, these are known in isolated examples. Okay, so uh, summary of uh, results in case I can't go into the proofs. So, single operators equilibrate thermalization exponent is given by this. Okay, the first term is the cal Calabrese Cardi term, and then there are uh, uh, terms which uh, get contribution from the chemical potentials and the uh, uh, you know um, W infinity or uh, the charges of these operators. So, um, good. So, how much time do I have? One minute. Okay, all right. Um, uh, so, this result can be generalized to an arbitrary string of operators. Um, so, let me just, uh, okay, so you can get some new universality relations which I am not uh, going into. Uh, let me just give you some, uh, you know, a glimpse about the uh, proof. So, in case of uh, Calabrese uh, Cardi, this uh, Hamiltonian term, okay, it could be understood as a Euclidean time evolution. So, it could be made into a uh, functional integral. 
okay but now we have this other uh, charges and we don't have any uh, you know time evolution kind of picture for that so we have to introduce uh, we have we have to uh, you know introduce an infinite number of charge contours okay this might uh, you know sound like a um, uh, you know very difficult uh, problem but what happens is that uh, you know there is a leading log summation uh, um, at large times okay it's only the op the leading op of all these charge currents with this uh, operator insertion that becomes uh, uh, relevant so as a result uh, fortunately although the charge insertions can be you know arbitrarily far away from this operator insertion it's only the um, op uh, term that uh, that's because there's some uh, nice monodromy argument that's involved here so anyway you can sum over all these log terms and you can re exponentiate and that is what uh, gives you the uh, you know the uh, renormalization uh, renormalization of the cardi calabrese exponent in terms of all these chemical potentials okay so uh, how does one show uh, um, about the general uh, correlators is is by uh, sort of uh, you know um, uh, deducing some property of the reduced dynamical uh, uh, reduced density matrix for the dynamical quench uh, of this interval a and showing that it goes to um, you know uh, the reduced uh, uh, reduced density matrix of the equilibrium ensemble and uh, uh, how does one do that so one takes an overlap of the square normalized density matrices and shows that um, uh, shows that it it uh, okay so this is oh, uh, this is what one shows that uh, so this is the this is the proposed this was proposed by cardi in the usual uh, calabrese cardi uh, state and we we show this uh, for that state as well as in in more uh, general thing the technique that comes in here is gluing uh, uh, one strip geometry with a cylinder geometry and uh, computing the partition function of this glued uh, geometry here so this cannot be directly done by using twist operators because the uh, because the geometries are unequal uh, but you can find out some glued wave function uh, and uh, expand this in terms of the uh, you know a, a, a series of uh, operators on these two uh, um, two field theories anyway so that's a lot of technique um, so the relation to entanglement entropy just in uh, uh, pictures is that uh, this is the one uh, single interval ent entanglement entropy has this broken linear uh, uh, graph that it goes linearly then it saturates but if you look at uh, some uh, you know radius of uh, around uh, beta then uh, th there is a smoothening and this smoothening is given by the same thermalization exponent that we have discussed uh, before as i said thermal correlators uh, uh, you know are related to this quench correlator and uh, so we can prove this mm. okay so just uh, if you give me two two minutes uh, can i get uh, Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, so, a th so in the um, so a thermal state, okay, in a two two D conformal field theory, okay, is uh, given by um, uh, you know uh, the BTZ black hole in, in 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 this case, and a thermophile double is dual to the eternal black hole, which was proved by uh, Maldacena uh, by showing that the uh, you know the Cardi Calabrese state. Okay, is dual to the state that is obtained here. It's a it's a hartle hawking state which is obtained by integrating out the the Euclidean past. And um, so you know, thermal decay corresponds to uh, for heavy operators, thermal decay corresponds to geodesics, which uh, whose length uh, goes as the same exponential of minus gamma t. And for light operators, uh, you know, these are these uh, perturbations to this thermal state are given by uh, you know some probe fields. Okay, and the thermal decay therefore corresponds to quasi-normal decay, and this was uh, um, uh, this check was made by uh, um, Sachs in 2010. Uh, so the holographic dual to the um, uh, sorry, excuse me, I, I, I said something wrong. Uh, this state corresponds to the thermophile double, and it's the half of that. If you break that, uh, cut this thing in a half, then this state here corresponds to the dual of the Cardi Calabrese state. Okay. So now, uh, what is the situation with the holographic dual, of the generalized quench state, which is the generalized Cardi Calabrese state? Now, remember that this has infinite number of charges. Okay, so um, what what then should be the um, uh, corresponding black hole state here? Of course, you can. The, our story is true also for finite number of charges. 
So if you just add some additional charge with an overall momentum for which it is easy to show that this corresponding works out. But suppose you have infinite number of charges, for example, a CFT carrying a representation of W infinity algebra. Okay. So now here the correct setting of asking the holographic questions is the setting of uh, Gabadil Gopakumar, the, uh, the, the one that uh, Matthias explained yesterday. So that is the HS lambda uh, um, uh, higher spin theory which is uh, dual to W infinity uh, coset uh, conformal field theory. So there are black holes in those which carry an infinite number of charges and uh, the fact that the so equilibrium uh, comparisons were made in two special cases uh, in, in the so there is a parameter here lambda in the two corners lambda equal to 0 and lambda equal to 1. What we find is that the thermalization exponent in the generalized quench state uh, which is the same as the thermal decay in the uh, generalized Gibbs ensemble turns out to be exactly equal to the imaginary part of the quasi normal frequency of the corresponding bulk field which is just a scalar field okay, in a higher spin black hole in which uh, the uh, spin 3 chemical potential is uh, excited. So this was done in a very nice paper by Narayan et al. And we find an exact agreement between our uh, thermalization exponent and the, their quasi normal frequency. And uh, since I am way over time, so I will just uh, flash the, okay, I will just get rid of all this. Uh, um, so this, this is the conclusions. Uh, so we found uh, this thing, we found, found that uh, somehow the um, uh, more and more details of the quench protocol are encoded in uh, more and more higher charges. So it is interesting to uh, ask you know, whether we can get any information about them um, or they, uh, in, in the absence of extra charges or they are completely washed away at large times. So, and, um, so we also showed that the, uh, the thermalization exponent exactly agrees with the quasi normal uh, frequency. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> Should you view the, the results for local, <coughs> since you have operators confined in a, in a sort of localized domain, should one view this as a statement of Page's theorem applied to continuum systems? Um, uh, okay, could be. Um, the way I would, uh, okay, so um, thanks for uh, mentioning this. So um, I would like to say the following, that, uh, you know, um, uh, I went over that uh, a bit fast. So integrable models, you know, uh, showing thermalization, was uh, a bit of a um, uh, you know surprise and uh, so the first papers which came out of uh, Marcus Regal and uh, uh, you know uh, Pascal Calabrese and collaborators was uh, as recently as uh, in 2004. Basically the idea is that although you have an integrable model if you are concentrating on some uh, you know operators in a particular uh, interval then the rest of the system can uh, act as a bath, heat bath for the system. And um, so, for example, in many of these systems like the transverse field rising model, uh, which has a, you know, a variant of a jordan Wigner transformation to free fermions, there <coughs> it is only the local operators which are the real space variables okay, which show this thermalization. But if you, for example, look at the momentum space variables, they do not show any thermalization at all. They, they show you know, eternally uh, sinusoidal uh, time variations. So, um, of course, it, this has not been made, uh, you know, um, uh, precise in this way that, um, but uh, in, in a general system. But what we have shown here is that the reduced density matrix of an interval, even in an integrable conformal field theory, really goes to the reduced density matrix of a thermal state of that interval. Okay. So, that is the most precise statement that locality is doing this job for me. Okay. And uh, of course, the whole system is not going into, I mean, you know, it is a pure state. So, it cannot go into mixed state, of course. But the, uh, but the reduced density matrix is really going over to uh, this one. Okay. <coughs> When you have a system with, uh, with this uh, large number of conserved charges, so if I am looking at uh, very long distance correlation functions, 
then would you expect that uh, those charges play a role? Because the expression which is showed for the free field looks okay. like they are suppressed. Yes, good, good. So, in fact, they are more and more, and more uh, irrelevant. So, these charges are higher and higher dimension operators. So, indeed, uh, that is why the universality relations that uh, the new universality relations that I, I, I showed, there you have to do some careful subtraction okay, of, the, of the leading, uh, leading term to show the uh, you know, effect of the uh, irrelevant um, operators. But it is but it's true that they are, they are higher and higher dimension operators.